normal change request plan start date cannot be less than three day from now so today requirement let's understand today's requirement today requirement is that normal change request so let's say somebody trying to create a normal change request and during the normal change request um this plan start date in the change we can't put that um uh, uh, let i mean less than three days from now so let's say that today is the uh, fifth then you have to be select i mean three future day so that's the requirement so if i go back to my service now instance if i type the change uh, risk waste and if we try to create new and then let's say i'm trying to create a normal change so model is or maybe type is normal and at that moment under the schedule you can't put the plan date uh, like today is the fourth so you can't put that uh, i mean after three days you have to be put that okay so you can't put less than three days okay so that's the requirement so we will put the fifth sixth something like that or maybe back date there it will give you the error so this is the requirement that they are uh, looking for so this is very common requirement for any change module i mean if you see out of box you can select that uh any past date but that is not the case so you can put the validation to do that to complete this requirement we need the client script and we need the script include definitely also we definitely need the um, the glide uh, date time object so last day we talked about the glide date time today also we are going to talk about the glide date time so if you have not watched my previous video i would ask to go and check my earlier video also if you have any specific requirement small requirement which is present to the out of box uh, table and everything you can give me the requirement just you have to go to this my website under this documentation and here you will get that all the documentation all the type of and here service now scripting under the service now scripting you have a requirement sheet here you can put your requirement so that i can get the requirement in my sheet so let's start our today's requirement to implement that so what we'll do whenever somebody change this one right so whenever somebody select any date we'll validate that date that this is the um three days from current days or not more than three days or not if not we are giving you the error right so that is the expectation um, um let's understand that so for that what we'll do i'm going to create a client script and then i mentioned that we need to be uh, create the script include why we need the client script and script include because we are going to use the glide ajax using the glide ajax will because the glide date time date the date validation cannot be done into this um, client side we have to check in the uh, server side but this data operation will somebody put the client side so we are going to create a client script and on the client script when somebody select the date we'll go and check in the server side that what date they are putting are they are putting correct date or not and then based on that we are going to take the actions first we are going to create a client script so i'm going to check that create new here in the name i'm going to put the name called um let's say that date validation one and here the table name will be the change request table so on which table we are trying to implement that so we are going to implement that under change request table and then ui type will be all i'm selecting and then type what type of client script i should use that so let's understand that when somebody is trying to select I, I you can do that on submit so depending on your use cases okay so you can check in the on submit or maybe a uh, client script so let's say that somebody putting that value and you want to restrict that's the one thing or maybe uh, when somebody tried to submit that that time you want to show the error you can also do that so i am doing based on this use case called on change because somebody put the planned uh, let's say the planned start date immediately i should validate that the planned start date that they have provided is correctly or not so that's the reason i select that the plan started and here i'll get the plan started and i'll call to the script include um call one of the script include and then the script include will give me that um the actual validation from the back end side and then um give you the response so i'm going to create a script include here and this is in the script include i am going to use a glide ajax so earlier also i use i'll explain you also the glide ajax here also so the script include name i am going to call that change so this is my script include and if you see at that moment we have a client callable checkbox because this script include is going to be called from that 
our client set so i'll select, select the client call level once i select the client call level you can see the predefined code is getting changed based on my selection so i'll select that client call level and here i'm going to check the uh, particular uh, call let's say that task start date validation okay and then here i'm going to put create a function and in this function what i am going to return i am just returning that let's say i am returning testing hello something like that so now we um, we are going to do the format code what we have to do from the client script we have to call this function and then uh, we have to mention that let say that for which role it is accessible so i'll select that ideal role so this client uh, script include is created and let's first validate that that from the client script we are able to successfully call this script include or not then later we'll do the date validation to call this uh, from the client script what we have to do we have to use the uh, g any variable where gx equal to new and then glide ajax okay under this glide ajax we need to pass the script include name so i'm going to pass this script include name and then after that we have to use the gx dot add param and then under this param what param we have to post that sys param underscore name and in bracket what we have to do we have to pass the function name so this is my function name so we are going to pass this function name the function name is that a uh, start date validation so i'll choose the function name. and then after that we have to use the gx dot get xml and under this get xml we have to if you see the pop-up is coming called callback function so we need to be passed the callback function name so let's say that i am putting that uh, data or maybe function anything you you put any any anything okay so this is my function name maybe this function i am going to call here so i am going to de declare a function called function and then this is the function and after that i in bracket i will put the response so this is my response and then this will be my function name and let's say i am going to store the answer equal to response and then i'll put alert So although our main focus is not script include or glide ajax but still i am just showing you that um, how we can write the code all right so what we are uh, at that moment what we are doing we created a client script and from the client script we are doing glide ajax to call a script include and then script include is simply returning a value called testing hello and then uh, whenever we are going to call that this the message will be just show a pop-up let's first see that we are able to successfully call the script include or not now we are going to select any date and then once we click OK and you can see I am getting the message called testing hello. It means that I am able to call from client script to the server script. Fine. Now what we have to do? We have to pass this value, the plan start date, whatever I am selecting that value we have to pass from client side to the server side here, right? To do that, what we are going to do? We are going to put another parameter called gx.addParam in bracket. We are pushing that sys param underscore start date something like that okay and then in bracket we are going to do that g underscore form dot get value we know that using that g underscore form dot get value we can get any particular field value so what is the field value the start date the field backend name is the start date so we are just passing the start date using that um sys param start okay now under the script include also we have to receive the value so let's say that uh, um i'm receiving that value here called var s date and then i'm putting that this dot get parameter 
in bracket grid parameter i need to uh, put these parameter name so that i am i'm sure that i should receive that date now i'll copy this variable name and then i will just um, you know combine this and make sure that uh, whatever date i am passing that i am receiving successfully or not instead of that maybe i can put the start underscore date something like that okay and then i'll just save that this one and then i'll just put same thing okay just save that so let's refresh one more time here our change request and see that we are whatever date we are passing actually that date is critical or not all right so here i'm going to select that seventh and whatever date i am passing that date is returning it means that i was successfully passing the date i mean i am able to successfully pass the date now the point the main point here is that how do we validate that date using the glide date time right so i'll go back to the first background script and then i will show you that how we can validate that and then later i will um, um show you that first i'll say that d1 equal to new glide date and time so what do we know gs.info using that we can get current date so let's first print our current date or not so we are going to print the current date so this is our current date right and current date is this is my date and time now let's print that where d2 so this is another variable here i will say that glide date time and then this time i should set this date whatever plan date there someone is passing so what is the plan date they are passing this is the plan date they are passing right so what i'll do d2 dot here you will get that set once you click the set and then you will get that lot of um set method so what we are trying to do we are trying to set the value so we we'll select the set value in bracket this is the value we are trying to set that and then i will print that d2 so what will get that in the in the print i'll get the whatever date i have set so let's see that so all right so first i get the current date and then i would get the second date whatever i have selected the seventh which is the second date i have selected basically the user have selected now we need to check the compare that both the date is three days or more than three days or not to validate that i am going to declare a d3 at that moment glide date dot subtract in bracket d1 comma d2 and then i will print that d3 okay and just run that so what you can see first i get a d1 using the d1 what we get we get current time then second d2 we set the time and then if we subtract that it is giving you that some uh, you know 1970 some date now what we'll do i'll say that d3 dot get display value so if we run this one what will be happen it will give you that two days 13 hours 48 minutes so the difference they are getting calculated by this one so two days 16 hour 48 minutes so this way we can get that um you know the date okay now gs dot info and here we can put the d3 dot get day part this method will give you only day not the hour part okay so this will give you the only days so if we run that so it is giving me two days so once we get the day we know that it is a two days difference now let's say that somebody put that eight it means that what is that it means that three days 16 hours 46 minutes right so it means that it is three days or maybe more than three days right in that way we can select that we can we can give you them or we can um give instruction that they can select also someone asked me that uh, to show you that uh, date difference so if you are trying to use the date difference uh, or if you your code is already exist and you are trying to use the date difference uh 
then you can use that but i'll before i'll talk to that point i'll go to this high um, one is this high recommendation so this is the high where they are saying that gs dot dead difference uh, return invalid results and if you see that the correct way is not the dead difference the correct way is the subtract so if you see this is the subtract method which is the correct um, you know uh, the process but uh, if you are trying to use that i mean in an incorrect way is that this is the incorrect way but if you are trying to use the dead difference then you should have that use the get display value so i'll just quickly show you the dead difference also so let's say that you declare a var uh, i'm just trying to declare it another variable called var d4 and here i'll just say that gs dot dead difference and in bracket i'm i'm passing the d1 then uh, d2 so we do have the variable and maybe uh, if we are passing the false earlier it was used to return the in a millisecond so if we are trying to uh, print that so let's say i'm trying to print this d4 and let's see first what is happening so if we run that uh, you know it will give you that uh, the same way that three hours uh, 16 i mean this is the one instead of that service now if you see here uh, uh, i'm doing the same thing right so this is the one and this is the one i'm doing the same thing the service now recommendation is that use the get display value and then get display value instead of uh, this one directly like instead of doing this called d1 comma d2 you, you try to use a get display value so that's the service now um, recommendation so you can use that so use the get display value and run that so you'll get that exact value and later you can do the split but this gs dot dead difference does not exist in our um, scope application for that you need to use the subtract so what we'll do i'll copy this code here and then go back to this here and then i will paste this code and then just do a formatting and then what we'll do in this will be our current date so there is no issue so i will remove that and this will be our uh, d2 i'll remove the info part and instead of this date i will copy and paste this date okay now what we'll do we are going to return this part okay so we are going to return this value so whatever date we are getting this date i am going to return i'll just save that now let's refresh our change module one more time now this time let's say that i am selecting at that moment six and click ok and it is giving me the one day now if i am selecting seven it is giving me two days so it is two days and then if i select that eight it is giving me the three days and let's go back and select any back date and once we are going to back and let's see you are getting that any back date it is giving you that um, in a minus right so what we can do here under this if answer equal to 3 or answer greater than 3 we will do we will allow okay else we will give an error So I'm giving you the alert that you have to have select a day more than three days. That's the alert we are giving. And here we are doing nothing. Okay. We are going to clear maybe the start date or we, we can, uh, you know, do whatever we want. We can just make this field mandatory and then we can clear this value so that nobody can submit that. So let's try one more time. So let's say somebody at that moment, uh, my date is uh, this date. So I'll select that seven and click OK. And it is giving me that error. And once we select eight, there is no error. So if we go back to the previous date, also it will give me an error. And yeah, so if we go back to any other future date, it will not give me error. So that way you can do a date validation. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. Have a great day.